Our national leadership can no longer see clearly and discern the difference between reality and fantasy. They're in a hallucination. Ignore that. It will end. Now, our first question. One plus one. Yes. Two. Incorrect. Yes. Multiculturalism. Well done, Simon. Next question. What is three times three? Yes. Nine. Wrong. Yes, Penelope. Gender equality. Very good, Penelope. Is this a joke? You think gender equality is a joke? No, but isn't this a maths class? Don't be so racist. I just asked a question. We don't ask questions. Questions are offensive. Yeah! Now, students, I trust you've all completed your research assignments. And remember, the person with the highest mark will be flying to New York to present their paper at the World Mathematics Summit. Well done, Penelope. Six out of ten. You too, Simon. Six out of ten. Hey, be careful. 
You've been staring at her for 10 seconds. What? It's a form of harassment to stare at a woman for more than 15 seconds straight. And when I use the term straight, I don't mean to offend any persons of a non-traditional sexual preference. And when I use the term non-traditional, I don't mean to offend any persons who oppose historically normalized... Okay, okay, I get it. Unfortunately, Sunshine, your research assignment is only worth a one out of 10. I've used Fourier transform and mathematical methods in electronics to analyze the electrodiagrams of at-risk patients and calculate their risk of experiencing a heart attack. I mean, it's a new method, but it could potentially save thousands of lives. Seven. You barely even read it. You used red pen. What? Red is considered defensive in many religions. Why would you belittle everything down to a singular color? Well, humanity is a rainbow of beauty and spirituality. Yeah. Okay, fine. Seven out of ten, but that still means I get to go to the summit, right? The marking process isn't over yet. Now, because we live in a society based on equality, the total amount of marks are to be divided equally among our students. You've got to be kidding me. Well done, students. We're all equal. We're all average. Yay! But then who gets to go to the summit? Oh, we haven't added our privilege points yet. Don't you know anything? That is correct. Now, Penelope, you are female, so that's plus one privilege point. However, you are white, so that's minus one. But I'm also bisexual. Plus one. That leaves you with a total score of six out of ten. Simon, unfortunately, you're straight, white, and male. And cisgendered. Yes, so that's minus four privilege points, which leaves you with a total score of one. It's only fair. Now you. You're male, and I don't like you. So that's minus two privilege points, but you are brown and sexually ambiguous. So that's plus two. That leaves you with a total score of five. Wait, why am I sexually ambiguous? And finally, Sunshine. Um, I'm gay, I'm trans, I'm Asian. <laughs> I'm overweight, I'm lower class, I'm unintelligent, unattractive. I've got hairs on my nipples. And I also got body odor. And I can't really run properly or tie my shoelaces by myself. And I once watched a pigeon die. Wonderful, Sunshine. That's... 13 privilege points. That leaves you with a total score of 18 out of 10. Well done, Sunshine. You're going to New York. Hooray, Sunshine! We knew you could do it! Let me see this. <laughs> They've just written equality and drawn love hearts on a piece of paper. He expressed himself and it's beautiful. He didn't even spell equality correctly. We don't discriminate. This has nothing to do with mathematics. Do you think you're so great with your maths and your science and your facts? What about feelings, huh? Yeah. Feelings are more important than facts. Yeah! This is wrong. You're all crazy. <sighs> Stop violating me with your different opinions! I have the right to speak my mind! No, we have the right not to be offended. And that's more important. And if you don't stop verbally assaulting us, we will be forced to attack you in self-defense. You can't do that. Actually, we have every right to do so. And it's illegal for you to fight back. Yeah! This is insane. Prepare to die a noble social justice warrior. Death. Hi, I'm Dr. Heather Silvio in beautiful Las Vegas. Come along with me as we talk to some folks on the street to find out what they know about special snowflake syndrome. I'm talking to folks on the street, asking them if they've heard of a couple of terms. Okay. Special snowflake, generation snowflake, or special snowflake syndrome. I haven't heard of any of the terms. No, I have. I have not. This is, this is brand new to me. This is totally brand new. The first two I've definitely heard, but the last one, Special Snowflake Syndrome, I haven't heard that one before. Actually, all the above, <laughs> actually. <laughs> what do you think they might mean based on just the names themselves? Does it have something to do with mental illness? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so someone with Special Snowflake Syndrome expresses incredible entitlement. 
acts out inappropriately when they don't get their way, and needs safe spaces and trigger warnings on everything that they find offensive because they're incapable of effectively communicating or even functioning. Yeah, actually, I did hear that because uh, I uh, I love the show Mad TV. They just uh, <laughs> they just did a, a reboot of that, and they had a sketch that made fun of that and everything. And like you know, everyone's just all like trigger, 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 and everything. Like they took it over the top, and it was funny. And I I didn't even know that that stuff was real though till you just told me. Actually, there was a story I read about a couple months ago about a woman in the UK who heads a think tank there, mm -hmm. and she talked about whenever she's doing panel discussions that the young people in the audience literally, they, cr they cry and break down when confronted with uh, opinions that they find to be different than their own or something that they find to be offensive. There is this lady that I used to work with and we have like these brainstorming sessions. And if you didn't like her idea, she'd get really upset. So once she started yelling and saying, fine, if you don't like my ideas, and she got up, threw down her water bottle, kicked her chair, and stormed out of the conference room and slammed the door. It was unbelievable. Okay, that's a pretty good story. I think you win our t-shirt. Oh, praises, <laughs> yes. College campuses used to be strongholds of free speech and exchanging ideas, but today all that's changed. Students now demand universities provide safe spaces to protect them from ideas that may cause them emotional harm. They want to be shielded from ideas or opinions they find offensive, going so far as to request trigger warnings to help them avoid hearing, seeing, or reading anything that might upset them. This thinking has led to some college guest speakers being protested, harassed, and even barred from campuses because they support views some students don't like. It's also caught the attention of Congress. Conservative commentator Ben Shapiro and comedian Adam Carolla recently testified about what some call the Snowflake Rebellion. All of our views should be judged on their merits, not on the color or sex or sexual orientation of the speaker, and those views should never be banned on the grounds that they offend someone. Even Christian colleges are not immune. We've lost the desire to teach what's true. We now, to get, we now give degrees and opinions rather than actually learning something, and this is absurd. Mm -hmm. Richard Weaver told us in 1948 in his seminal work titled Ideas Have Consequences, yeah. that ideas have consequences, yeah. they matter. And when you teach good ideas, you get good culture, good kids, good community, good government, good church. And when you teach bad ideas, you get the opposite. And what we have today is ideological fascism on our campuses rather than academic freedom. We actually are telling people, mm -hmm. conservative speakers primarily, if you don't agree with us, if you're not one of us, if you're not a, a part of the fascist, the common bond of ideas, we will crush you, we will expel you, you're verboten, you're unwelcome. This is not classical liberal arts education because it's not liberty, it's not freedom, it's not justice, it's fascism, it's not freedom. Uh, we see these angry red faces of these 19 and 21 year olds in the campus green protesting and saying, we don't agree with you, you've offended us, there's an idea here we don't like and therefore we want to silence you, you're unwelcome. What kind of academic freedom is that? Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus told us that yeah. you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Opinions always lead to bondage and slavery That's and true. truth sets us free. Jesus is the Son of God, yeah. the Bible is the Word of God, truth is given by God and wisdom Holiness, sanctification, obedience is demanded by God. It's not optional. So by and large, people are recognizing we've created a monster. It's turning around to bite us. We've lost the ability to understand that truth is the context for freedom. And when you stop mm -hmm. teaching truth, human freedom is lost. Our leaders, our po both political and religious leaders, seem so confused that their decisions border on delirium. You see, like rabies, decades ago, what started out to be something very innocent, uh, our great nation contracted this terrible spiritual rabies that has led to cerebral dysfunction. Rabies leads to behavior that is totally abnormal. And if allowed to continue, it will end in delirium and, a, I'm afraid, a state of death even to our nation. It started out innocently enough with the desire to be less offensive. It's a good thing for society to be, right? Less offensive to one another. 
in the realm of religion, we had the seeker-friendly movement in the churches. It started out as an effort to make unchurched people feel welcome in church and to feel less uncomfortable in the setting of a traditional church. But it went too far. And now we have churches whose services are more like, like a Broadway production than a worship service. It eventually led to the emergent church, which is completely apostate, denying the miracles of the Bible, the divinity of Jesus Christ, and even avoiding at all costs the mention of that terrible S word, sin, lest it offend someone. In the political realm, the government also began to encourage us as a society to change our our speech so that we'd be less offensive. We called it being politically correct. And we've been encouraged by our government to change our vocabulary in order to be less offensive and more politically correct. At one time, for instance, it was thought that a person who was not able to walk was simply crippled. But that seemed to describe something more harsh. And so that was deemed to be too degrading. It was changed to handicapped. But this was eventually thought to be too offensive as well, and it was changed to disabled. And then finally they said, no, no, that's too harsh as well, so now we have to say they're physically challenged. With the extreme efforts these days to separate church and state in public institutions, we had to remove all words that were of a religious nature. I read of a a story, this is a few years ago, and you may remember seeing it in the newspapers, about a teenager in Seattle who volunteered at a local elementary school to do a project as part of a community service project in which she desired to hand out to the little children those little plastic eggs filled with jelly beans, Easter eggs. And asking the teacher for permission, the student reported, and I quote, She said that I could do it as long as I call this treat spring spheres. I couldn't call them Easter eggs. Spring spheres? I can't even hardly say it without spitting on the front row. It's horrible. I mean, I don't want my vocabulary to be offensive, but I'm not sure I know how to talk without it being offensive. I'm not politically correct, and to be quite honest with you, I have no desire to be. But it seems that we have changed things. We've changed things to the point that people are becoming paranoid about it, like like rabies. We've reached the state of paranoia. It seems like everybody's offended about something these days. Wait, Wait a minute. Am I being a little facetious with that picture? (laughs) You better watch out. The PC police are watching. And they're liable to betray you and turn you in. We've gone to the extreme to the point of paranoia. People don't want to be hurt in public because they're afraid that somebody will accuse them of being politically incorrect. It seems that our national leadership, both politically and religiously, can no longer see clearly and discern the difference between between reality and fantasy. They're in a hallucination state. Level-headed common sense has been replaced with hysteria and overreaction. So now we've reached a point of absolute delirium. And as a result, our original uh, political and, and religious foundations that made this country great are crumbling right before our very eyes. It seems like everybody's offended, offended, offended about something these days. Then shall many be offended.
You better watch out. The PC police are watching. And they're liable to betray you and turn you in. And shall betray one another and shall hate one another. We've gone to the extreme to the point of paranoia. People don't want to be heard in public because they're afraid that somebody will accuse them of being politically incorrect. Someone with special snowflake syndrome expresses incredible entitlement, acts out inappropriately when they don't get their way, and needs safe spaces and trigger warnings on everything that they find offensive because they're incapable of effectively communicating or even functioning. Level-headed common sense has been replaced with hysteria and overreaction. So now we've reached a point of absolute delirium. And as a result, our original uh, political and, and religious foundations that made this country great are crumbling right before our very eyes. We see these angry red faces of these 19 and 21 year olds in the campus green protesting and saying, we don't agree with you. You've offended us. You've offended us. You've offended us. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. There's an idea here we don't like, and therefore we want to silence you. You're unwelcome. You know, Jesus told us that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Opinions always lead to bondage and slavery, and That's truth right. sets us free. Our national leadership can no longer see clearly and discern the difference between reality and fantasy. They're in a hallucination state. I just asked a question. We don't ask questions. Questions are offensive. Yeah. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Jesus is the Son of God, yeah. the Bible is the Word of God, truth is given by God, and wisdom, holiness, sanctification, obedience is demanded by God. It's not optional. So by and large, people are recognizing we've created a monster. It's turning around to bite us. We've lost the ability to understand that truth is the context for freedom. And when you stop the teaching truth, the human freedom is lost. And when you stop the teaching truth, the human freedom is lost. And when you stop the teaching truth, the human freedom is lost. great, horrible mess, the spiritual depravity that the United States of America suffered on June the 26th, 2015. Holiness, sanctification, obedience is demanded by God. It's not optional. People are recognizing we've created a monster. It's turning around to bite us. We've lost the ability to understand that truth is the context for freedom. And when you stop the teaching truth, the human freedom is lost.